Let's see. We've got the photographer. We've got the floors. The DJ. We've got the venue. We've got the food. The cake. Mm, man, is anything missing? What do we? What else do we need? I think we've got. Uh, who's gonna marry us? That's usually the last guy that finds out that you're getting married is your minister. So what five questions do you need to ask your minister when you meet with them? Uh, or also get yourself ready to talk with that minister. What are five things that you need to think about what are important to you and maybe your couple style as to what you want to have for that ceremony setting? Listen, it's supposed to be one of the most beautiful times, the beautiful day of your life, uh, usually next to your child being born. So let's make sure it's special. Well, the person who's going to conduct that for you, facilitate that for you, needs to be the right fit. You need to make sure that you feel comfortable with them and you feel proud to have them a part of your special day. So let's ask these questions. Question number one you need to ask your minister is, what faith or style are they? And you may think, well, maybe you don't have a real strong belief system, but they may have one. And so you need to know that that may show up in their ceremony style. What is their public speaking style? Have you seen one of their weddings on video or possibly have you attended one of their weddings? That's really important because either you're going to have, you know, a beautiful ceremony that is a perfect fit for you and, and your fiance, or maybe it's going to be a church service. Maybe they're strong in their belief system. Maybe they're strong Christian, uh, non-denominational, or maybe even some denomination. And they think it's an opportunity to share their faith with your guests. Is that what you want? Now, it may be, but maybe not. Um, maybe it's going to be a comedy hour. I mean, I've been to some, seen some ceremonies where the minister's he thinks telling a joke every few minutes is really good to keeping everybody up and happy and laughing. But is that what you want? Uh, I've been to other services where uh, someone who's very dignified, uh, but to me it seemed like the minister was, it was more of a funeral service because it was like the frozen chosen were, he was speaking to and everybody was really quiet and very still, but that's how they held themselves. So I've always known that when you make a connection as a minister or an officiant with the couple, that connection that you have with them, the whole, all your guests and, and people there are going to feel that. They're going to feel that connection. So that's really important that it's a right fit. Is one way better than the other? I'm not saying that. That's, that's your personal style that you like. You may like something very up and, and fun and, 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 and a lot of laughter. And maybe there's a little bit of that within your ceremony that you want, which I think is good because that's life. We, we laugh at each other and we laugh at ourselves. And so uh, that may be a part of it. But is there a romantic side to it? Is there a loving side to it? Is there uh, a, a somber side because you're making commitment to this person for life? You're sharing vows with this person um, that are promises for life. So there needs to be a somber side too. So these are important. Again, number one, what faith or style are they? And then number two would be, uh, do they provide ceremony options? When you contact them and you want them to perform your ceremony or you're thinking about it, do they have more than one script option for you to uh, read? Or will they allow you to provide them with maybe a ceremony that you like? That's a possibility. Um, also with that is, um, do they allow you to be flexible? Can you uh, maybe adjust some words here and there? I remember one bride, I uh, had the word covenant in the ceremony. And she said, I have a hard time pronouncing that word covenant, because it was within some of the traditional vows. I was going to read the vows, and she was going to read them after me, and she she had a hard time saying that word covenant, so we exchanged that for the word promise. No big deal. 
I think the officiant needs to be very flexible with the, the couple. It needs to be easy for them to just go through and flow through. He needs to be a facilitator of that ceremony. So it's just really easy for them, fun and enjoyable. Um, does the minister offer illustrated ceremonies, such as maybe a unity candle? How about sand ceremony or the wine blessing or maybe even communion? These are all things that may be important to you. And you need to know that the minister is totally cool with you adding some of these elements to your ceremony. Maybe you have somebody who's going to sing a solo or somebody who's going to read a poem. That is a part of your special day. If you want that, that needs to be available. Maybe you want to do your personal vows then that also is a part which needs to be incorporated within the ceremony, okay? Uh, number three is, um, do they offer a pre-ceremony planning meeting? Now, a lot of weddings have a rehearsal, and usually uh, the wedding coordinator is there to conduct the uh, procession along with the recession, and in that process, uh, you're learning where to stand and where the flower girl is going to be and the ring bearer and, and, and the process of, of coming together and lining up and then exiting after the ceremony. Um, sometimes ministers will attend that rehearsal. We found it better for a pre-planning meeting where the minister uh, meets with the bride and groom and we go over all the details of what takes place once the uh, bride gets to that place where she's going to be handed off to the groom. And then the minister takes it from there. And then we go over all the details of what's going to take place in that ceremony. We structure that and we plan that together with the couple. So that when that time comes in the ceremony, the, the bride and groom know exactly what's going to happen because that minister is going to facilitate that whole process. Sometimes the, the um, bridal coordinator, uh, maybe day of event coordinator, doesn't necessarily want the minister to be there to practice all that then because they usually like maybe to take 45 minutes and to run through the procession, recession, and then let the minister do that at another time. So we found that works best to meet with the bridegroom maybe 30 days prior. That would be best. That's a good window. Um, so that's number three, offer a pre-ceremony or planning meeting. And then number four, what authorization do they actually have to perform a ceremony? Okay, now there's a family code in Southern California, and that is uh, from 400 to 402, which is basically this, that a, a denomination or a ministry authorizes through ordination or license a clergy to uh, solemnize a wedding ceremony. So that's what we have as well. I at one time was an ordained minister. Uh, I now am a licensed minister, have been since 1987, and I have performed countless. I think we figured, oh my gosh, we've probably done about 600 weddings just since 2005. Now, I haven't done all those ceremonies. I've done most of those have been flowers, but we've done many, many ceremonies. I probably average about two, three a month and uh, we love doing it. We love taking care of people. But that's the, the need to be authorized by the state so that when you send in the license, they see that you are a licensed minister and that it's actually a legitimate ceremony and a legitimate wedding. Okay. Now, number five, which leads us into uh, the license, is what happens after the ceremony. That's something you need to ask your minister. What are they going to provide for you after the ceremony? So usually what happens is there's one person that is a, uh, a witness, and that usually can be the best man or the maid of honor. It's not necessary that both of them sign the license. Usually one is sufficient. The minister also takes the license. He signs it, fills out some information, and it's his job to take that license and then mail it in. Where does it go? Usually there's an envelope that is from the county that the couple purchased the license at, and that a uh, license would be mailed back to that county, and it needs to be mailed back to the county within uh, one week, seven days. Now, usually that couple will have gone to the county clerk's office. They give you a 90-day window from the time you purchase the license until uh, you get married. So you have 90 days to make that happen. And then again, the minister gets it after the ceremony. It's also good to maybe have someone who's designated to have that license available for the minister after the ceremony. 
why not it be the witness, the person you decide whether the maid of honor or the best man, or maybe a parent is there and you want them to be the witness. Just one is sufficient. And then the minister is to take care of it from there. So these are those five questions. What faith or style are they? Number two, do they provide ceremony options for you? Number three, do they offer pre-ceremony planning? Number four, what authorization do they have? And number five, what happens after the ceremony? So, uh, I, hey, this is great for you to listen in on this. Hopefully this has helped you uh, as you're preparing for your wedding. Uh, please subscribe down below and then ding the bell so that you can get notification when we put out new wedding and floral and ceremony videos for you. Um, also contact us. If you're in the Southern California area, you're getting married and you're thinking, I need a minister. Well, uh, give us a call. Let's see if we're available for you. We'd love to talk with you and help you out in that whole process of that special, special wedding day. I always consider it a great honor to be a part of a couple's uh, wedding because, as I said earlier, it is, uh, should be, right, one of the most special days of your life, next to maybe the birth of your child. What other day do you have in your life that you are committing your life to this other person and they're committing their life with promises and vows of love? It's really a terrific day and it's, uh, it's, it's one of the best that you can experience. So why not pick the right minister and make it happen right, okay? Don't leave this to chance. Um, but I, again, give us a call or contact us if you need our help. We'd love to help you. Please ask some questions too. There's other things you want to know about wedding. I've been in, in the wedding business. My family goes back over 100 years in the wedding industry. So please ask us some questions. I'd love to create more videos for you, more information. So thank you so much. Again, this is Eric, Bella Flora Wedding and Event Designs. Talk to you next time.